Hello everyone, welcome to the fifth episode in our exciting new webinar series, What's Coming from 12D. My name is Lisa Stewart and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator at 12D Solutions. These webinars showcase features that will be included in upcoming versions of 12D Model and 12D Synergy to give you an idea of what to expect when the versions are released. We'll keep running these webinars regularly in coming weeks and recording them for posting on our YouTube channel with links through our website. During this presentation, you'll be able to type your questions along the way, as shown on the screen, and we'll answer as many as possible throughout the webinar. At the end, I'll read out some of your questions to the presenter if there's time. Today's webinar, Pavement Manager, will be presented by Peter Tainton, who has over 20 years of experience in various facets of road design. He's been engaged in large projects for several major councils and government road authorities. Over the last 19 years, he has worked closely with our programmers in the implementation of a variety of design features within 12D model software. Today we'll look at Pavement Manager in 12D Model 15, exploring unlimited pavement types and layers, user-defined choice lists for layer names and descriptions, offsets and end slopes for each individual layer, two-link curb definition, and more. Over to you, Peter. Thank you, Lisa. It's a quick background on the V14 Pavement Manager. It allows the creation of a variety of pavement styles, uh, which were then applied by the MTF snippet. The introduction of layers other than design within the MTF really made this possible. Modifiers such as the shape modifier completed the process and the introduction of trimesh pavements. There were snippets that referenced pavement styles for pavement curb pavement batter and pavement only. So why another manager? Feedback from users. The number of reference styles available was in the hundreds but the interface lacked from a copy and paste feature. The properties required for layers were varied in particular their names and descriptions and no user-defined choice list was available. The start and end links selected in the snippets needed to take into account changes in road crossfall and the variety of links that can make up a design curb or barrier profile. The snippets provided a variety of start and end slope options but they were applied to the complete pavement, not to each individual layer. While some attributes were automatically assigned to tri meshes, there were requests to be able to apply user-defined attributes as well during the apply process, in particular BIM attributes for export to IFC, and just a general snippet update. So what could we do to improve this? To start with, a new interface, copy and paste features an unlimited number of layers and pavement styles. Version 14 allowed a maximum of 10 for the reference style, the zone and subsequent layers in that zone. A new approach to layers and their properties and an update again of the snippets. I'll look at the new pavement manager. So the default tab has a model naming convention similar to version 14. The text shown here is user definable and makes up the prefixes for the final model name in the apply many. There's the addition of a layer name file. That layer name file will allow you to create user defined layer names and descriptions as choices for the pavements, curbs and verges. Every layer in the pavement curb and verges can now have attributes applied to them. These attributes will update at the recalc time. They are available under the new choice for uh, edit attributes, the custom attributes that are available in V14 now, 
the new V15 Meta Connects and a simple grid choice. The pavement tab. With the advent of a grid, the idea of copy and paste is now available. So right click normally on the grid allows you to copy and paste or even duplicate the line. On the panel there, there are two greyed out columns, the number of layers and the depth. These are information columns and reflect your layer definition. Again, the layers are stored in the layer definition panel. Left click will bring up the pavement panel. Again, multiple layers can be defined using the copy and paste in the grid. Attributes can also be created from the attribute column and these attributes again apply directly to the TriMesh and updated at every recalc. Left button on the description panel activates the user defined uh, name and description file and displays the current one that you're after. The inner and outer offset are as per version 14 but we have added the a inner and outer or start and end slope for each layer. These are optional. If entered here they will be used. If not, the slope defined on the snippet will be used. So you should have enough information and uh, options there to create some well-defined pavement layers, not only in, in relation to the number of layers, uh, but their naming. The curb tab again has a copy and paste in the grid. Access to the user defined layer list and descriptions from left click on the on the description column. Attribute information and the depth is specified for each of those profiles at the lip of curb and the offset behind the back of curb. The curb layer snippet now uses a two link curb definition. In this case the end link would be the lip of curb and the back of curb string. All the strings between those two strings are then copied to form the shape of the curb trimesh. A new snippet is available to reflect this. There's also a curb slope available, similar to the curb slope on the pavement. The verge is similar, copy and paste grid, user defined descriptions and names and attribute column. A view of the, some of the uh, types of profiles and papers we can create now. All available by the new snippets. The pavement only and pavement batter have been combined as just one pavement. Access to the new drop down choice list for the reference styles, unlimited number. The rest of the panel is very similar to the existing snippets. The new curb snippet. Again, has a reference style for the pavement types and the new curb style. In this case here, the, the center line string has been picked. The end link is the curb lip and the back of curb string is selected with name grays to define any slope behind the curb or underneath the curb. So again, the attributes being applied to every layer inside 12D V15 then is controlled by the BIM attribute tree for export to IFC. So now look at a demonstration. So we are in version 15, our pavement manager, our naming convention, the um, list of ways to apply attributes to the layers in your pavement style and the layer names. So layer names at the moment are a, a text file so here we have the name of our trimesh, the description, and um, its um, list in the in the uh, file format, whether it's under a group or not. So I go to my pavements. Again, I can go now. It's in a grid. I can go click on here, right mouse button, copy and paste or duplicate. So I've got a uh, a columns here for the layer, a number of layers, and the uh, overall depth. And if I select on the layer definition, it brings up the panel to uh, create our layers. We're using the layer name definition, so if we go left click on the description column, we get access to the 
naming convention or a standard naming convention. It then fills out the description and the name. We then have to enter a, a depth, any information into its attributes that we want, uh, colors and so forth. And as you can see by the, the section view here, uh, we can vary the slope uh, at the end and also the start. Uh, but in this case here I've, I've set a slope for a couple of the intermediate layers and the rest of these will be taken care of using the, uh, the snippet itself. Again, uh, right mouse button, duplicate and so forth uh, for the copy and paste. If you wish to uh, create a layer or enter a layer name that's not part of a standard naming convention, you can go back to here and turn off Use Layer Name drop into pavements again so when you pick on here it's just a normal direct entry again it's just it's simply a matter of just swapping between the two so for the curbs same thing I can pick up on here and go and pick my standard name uh, for the curb profile you can apply attributes and also a depth at the lip of curb and offset behind the curb and similarly for verges so the the paper manager has all that flexibility uh, the the major uh, Part of that is the ability to have unlimited um, pavement styles and unlimited layers. So to use that inside our MTF file, we've grouped together the pavement only and pavement batter ones from version 14 into one pavement snippet. So it also then picks up your reference style again, um, and the, um, the same as version 14, we're utilizing the name of the reference string and so forth. But we have this new option here called link copy mode. So what the, as you see in this road here, part of the road actually has a change in crossfall uh, from the crown out to my shoulder out here. Uh, so we've selected off here. I want to use start to end and all the links in between. So in that case here we only have to define those two points and all the links in here where they come and go uh, will be copied down through the pavement style. Once you've done that, uh, you simply just have the same choices, reference style, uh, end point, any batters you may want and so forth, any slopes under the curb. Similar, all this is similar to version 14. Um, again we have a, um, a the, the cutoff string so I've um, ended a, created a string on a layer called cut and uh, using that as a, a cutoff point for my uh, trimesh. Um, so good for things like the, um, uh, table drains and also um, uh, medians where you just want to sl uh, slice the pavement off. So again, it can um, uh, run through and create that profile. The best part is the fact that it follows and copies the, pro the changing crossfall across the road, so you don't have to individually do these bits. For something, the, the strings on those layers get copied down, um, so they, they follow a, a similar naming convention. So you're looking at um, uh, layer UZF, um, it's on layer 8, uh, left hand side and it belongs to or from uh, our reference alignment string. Um, so again the, the other strings that get copied down that we generally don't know of between those two points uh, from our design surface they just utilize the same name as the design string and copy down through the layers. In this case I'm going to put a, a trench underneath this uh, point by picking this string on this on this pavement layer so it's a uh, edge of shoulder it's been copied all the way down and it's on layer 8. Um, so utilizing um, in this case the same point and on the same layer. So instead of doing the, uh, the link copy mode all links I'm just using only start and end. So I apply that it then goes and creates the uh, trench based on the on the style that I specified in the pavement manager. Uh, inside that pavement manager it had an offset uh, left and right to form the width of the uh, of the trench. So another way of using the pavement uh, attributes is also uh, when you want to pick uh, two different strings. So in that case here I want to put a bit of pavement underneath here and it's uh, linked to this layer from this pavement style and this layer from this pavement style. So I'm going to pick this point here and the outside point. So again I'm going to use start and end again. So it selects up the 3D link from the top part layer of T1 and the outside edge is the uh, UZF layer on layer 8. So I go apply, <coughs> excuse me, then it turns around and applies that layer. So it just shows there's a variety of being able to apply um, uh, the copy command and also the traditional uh, two-point pavement uh, underneath a um, uh, layers. 
So again, in this case here, it's using two different points on two different layers. And finally, the last one is um, uh, no different, but it's just using the, the uh, copy all the way from uh, start to end and just applying one of the, the larger profiles that I've prepared here um, with um, 16 layers in it. Um, so again, the ability to be able to copy and paste and in this case here the um, uh, the changes in um, offset all the way down and also batter slope all the way down. As we step through the section you'll see the, the, the dual crossway here or, or, or double lane crossway crossfall. As we look at this point here it changes to, to one crossfall but still does the pavement and then as we move along it goes back to the uh, the double crossfall. So this string here I just made a modifier to make that string disappear. Um, so as you can see the, the, the pavement still follows the profile of the road. So we get down to the end of the road and here's the multiple pavements. So on the um, the pavement style there again is a combination of the pavement only and batter. So on the right hand side of the road we use our pavement um, styles and we go back to our curb option. So it's going to be a snipper called uh, curb pavement. So it has the reference style as previous for the different layers on the road and under the curb, but it has this new option called curb style. So I picked up the SA curb. So in that style, remember, it is defining the the uh, colours for the um, um, shape, uh, the depth under the under the lip of curve here at this at this point, and any slopes that may uh, be applied to the outside of the uh, curb. Um, so the curb snippet. Ask you only now for the, um, or in this case here, a start point over there, but also just the end link, uh, which is the uh, lip of curb and the back of curb. So all the points in between are just copied down to form the curb shape. So again, this is only a generic um, curb profile. Um, so again, it'll, it'll be, uh, it can be a, a, a barrier curb. Um, it can be um, a edge, an edge uh, strip. Uh, a drain, uh, no matter what it is, it's uh, just defined as a, as a curb shape. So again, under all the, the, the pavement attribute types, um, we're looking at um, these attributes. Uh, they're all prefixed with the word BIM, uh, so we th that then controls what attributes go out to IFC. So under our BIM export, IFC, under the uh, attribute tab, we are using uh, use IFC attribute tree and we've entered uh, BIM as our, uh, our um, tree name. Again, when we output to IFC, uh, we have our pavement and utilizing those uh, the attribute definitions for each layer now, uh, we can then control what tabs are output to IFC. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what uh, is uh, available or coming in, in version 15 and I think you should be feel happy with the, the ability to, be able to uh, have uh, multiple layers and um, uh, the copy and paste uh, editor. Uh, I'd like to thank you very much for attending. Thanks for that Peter. Sorry I was just having a bit of a problem with my sound there for a moment. So I think um, that was pretty comprehensive today. I don't, um, if anyone has any questions that they want to send through to us, then please feel free. We've had a couple of really nice um, comments on the way through. Um, oh, actually, there's one here, Peter, I'm not sure if, um, if you want to take this one live, but it was about how to calculate pavement material. Is that one we can chat about live or is that easier to um, email an answer to later? Well, obviously, each of the um, the pavements shown there are tri meshes, um, so you're able to uh, they yeah, report on those tri meshes uh, just like you do a normal volume report between um, uh, tin surfaces, and uh, they also when you uh, inquire on them, there's a volume involved in that uh, tri mesh, um, so there shouldn't be any problem in being able to to uh, output the information about the the uh, pavement. Sure. Okay. Um... I'm just having a, having a little look here. We do have a couple here. Um, oh, Dean has asked, can you have negative slopes at the start and the end? Yes, you can. 
Yep. So, so, so it's all all defined as a as a slope one in. So it's a little, little bit easier than having to go and calculate cross falls and things like that. Yes, you can have a negative and positive, so you can make pavement go underneath each other and come back. Uh, it works in the same way as the as the offsets do. Great. Uh, and the oh, okay, we've got got a few coming in now. Um, Chase has said, will will the attributes populate the volumes to the trimesh? Um, I can't remember with not because uh, I know the volumes are available obviously as a as a post process. Um, I'm just not too sure that we're going to be able to to do that. Obviously, once it's created, uh, then that's when the the uh, the attributes are applied. Um, uh, but I'll, I will yeah I don't not too sure whether that's going to be possible because as I said, it's already being created. Uh, the, the attributes applied afterwards. Um, but uh, anyway, we'll have a look at it. Anyway, at the moment, there's obviously you can output things to BIM through the, the attribute manipulator. Uh, it has the option there to to pick up the um, uh, volume of a of a trimesh. The only difference there is that not at the recalc time, but it is uh, available as a post process. Sure. Uh, and Scott has asked, will there be standard curb and pavement files in the 12D Model 15 package for like TMR, RMS and such, or will they need to create their own from scratch? Oh, I'll probably do them like I did with that RMS one on the, on the, on the screen. Then I just went through their standard drawings and picked up the curve profiles, the SA curves, and where the main roads would be type 15s and 17s, I think they are. Um, sometimes it's a bit hard to know because the, some of the uh, pavement types are um, you know, redundant. Um, but um, uh, yes, I will probably make a um, a list with probably the RMS or um, uh, as well as TMR as examples. Uh, but as you can see on the screen, it's quite easy to to edit and create your own. Um, remember, for the curve profiles, you're not actually defining anything other than uh, its name, uh, its um, uh, depth at the at the lip of curb, and the and the profile at the back. You're not actually defining the physical strings at the top. Uh, they they come from the from your actual design MTF file. Sure, and um, another one from Scott. Has the subgrade tin process changed? No, you'll still be able to tick on the. I, I must have missed that part, but um, you will be able to still tick on the 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 option in the in the panel uh, at, at the very end. There's an active button, and there's also an option to say, "Do you want a tin?" And you say yes and no. Um, um, it's probably. Uh, so, like, there, there also is the option under the um, BIM to create a tin from a variety of tri meshes outside of the MTF file, and uh, so it's a bit of cash to, uh, to you know, half a dozen one six to the other whether you want to um, create the the tin inside the MTF or do it outside. But the option was there. Okay, and I might just um, read out one more of these live. Uh, ben has asked. Can you retrieve pavement volume calculations through the pavement manager? No, well, no, no not not at the moment. Um, as in, if you if you had a, a tin surface, obviously, then you could say it was down to the tin. But um, uh, the as said, the volumes are are part of the actual uh, snippet or the trimesh report up under uh, volumes. Uh, so you can get a, a fairly comprehensive. Uh, you don't get the little pop up thing down the bottom uh, showing exactly. Um, uh, each one, uh, but uh, the the volume report will 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 give you that. Great. Now we've got quite a few other really good questions that have been coming through, but I think some of them are probably a bit complicated to um to handle live. So what I might do, Pete, is send you through uh, an email. Yeah, I'll send you through the a summary of these questions, and you can get back to the other people um, by email. Uh, Rather than sort of yeah, um, having all that live, so I'll I'll get that through to you very shortly. So thank you so much to everybody who's asked all these questions. They're really um, very insightful, and of course we're going to delve a lot more into these features and many more at our 2021 Tech Forum, which is going to be an online event this October. We've got details of that starting to go out by email and stuff now. And the recording of today's webinar will be available in coming days through the webinars page on our website and our 12D Model YouTube channel. I'm also going to email everyone who registered a link to that um, so it's nice and easy to access. Keep an eye on our emails and social media for details of our future webinars, including what's new in 12D Synergy. And we've got another water one for our dynamic drainage flooded with calculations coming up soon too, and a few others in the series uh, through July. 
so yes if you need to contact us we're always available by email and um, everyone else who's asked questions as I say I'll get Pete to um, email some questions email some answers through to you shortly that concludes today's presentation thank you all very much for attending and we hope to see you at future webinars <music>